The following podcast contains language and themes that some people may find offensive. We must also apologise for the quality of Emmy's audio. Though it sounds like she's recording from a public toilet, she was just really using a dodgy mic. That's all. Honestly. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to That Was The Week That Was, Was It? The podcast that has returned for Series 3. Yes, Series 3. I can only apologise. I'm Alex Sivright and joining me for this episode is Emmy Weber. Hello, Emmy. Hello. You all right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, actually good today. Very good today, are you? Yeah. Nothing exciting happening? Not before now, no. Good. Well, our guest for this episode is a singer, songwriter and Canadian. It's Stephen Page. Hello, Stephen Page. Well, hello. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I think I'm well. Good. I'm breathing. Good. That's well, it's where we all have sips of water. Yes, we do. Yes. Let's make it more audible, right. shall we? Um, here we go. Mm. Nice. <coughs> Nearly choked. <chilled. laughs> mm. So, Stephen, let's get to the nitty gritty. You are about to embark on a tour of the UK. I... We're talking a matter of days. Exactly. And this is being released on September 5th. I don't know if I should well, have that. Well, then I'm already in the UK. Oh, you're already in the UK right now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm there for a week before the tour oh, starts. Oh, so we're yeah. actually talking to you in the UK as we speak. That's right. Technically speaking, I'm actually in Cornwall right now. Ah, uh, what's the weather like? Uh, it's it's always wonderful down here. Isn't it? It's just so much warmer. It's just it's, It feels like it's not even in Britain. <laughs> It, yeah, I've heard. I haven't been to Cornwall. I should have, but that's what they say down there. They kind of feel like they're not even British. No, yeah. yeah. And they got the nice sandy beaches. Everywhere else is stone beaches. Mm-hmm. They got really nice sandy beaches and surfing. And yeah, I hear, I hear amazing things. So you're enjoying your stay in Cornwall right now. Um, you got a new album coming out as well very soon, I believe. Yep. Do you enjoy being so busy? Yes and no. Part of me just wants to be able to... I'm at a point now where I've wanted to just lie down for a week or so. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I've, never, I've never been big on the, the beach vacation, but now I can see the, I can see the, uh, the charm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm at a point where I'm, like, just about hit a wall. I, was, I finished the album just in time, and now, now to go and hit the road until probably Christmas time. Okay. Um, so how long are you in the UK for? Uh, th- until the last show is on the, mm, what is it, the 19th, 18th, so I leave on the 19th. Right, okay, yes. okay. So quite a long stint then. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll discuss that a bit more later, but Stephen, we're not here to talk about your tour at the moment, we're here to discuss your week. That's right. I did insert a joke here about, it's been one week. Oh, very good. I didn't even th- Why did I not even think of that? I'll be honest, it was the first thing I thought of. Um, but... Let's start at the beginning. Mm. Monday. What was Monday like for you? Monday was, well, I had just returned home uh, from uh, from a, a trip out to the West Coast, so I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. I was, um, because the, my flight partway through had been canceled, I flew from Portland, Oregon to, she, to Chicago, and then Chicago to Syracuse, where I live. Right. But the Chicago to Syracuse flight was canceled. Oh, so then I had to do the uh, the running around, uh, and trying to trying to beat everybody else who was going to try and um, change their flight as well. Oh, you were Steve Martin in yes, Prison exactly. Office. I felt very much like that. Yeah. I felt as conniving, yeah. and as selfish as as Steve Martin in that film. And then, uh, so did you tell anyone that you wanted a fucking car right fucking now? No, I've realized that that is that is the. M- that is the general feeling in the world right now, especially in America. That's that every traveler thinks that they are the most important traveler and that everybody must uh, suffer for them. Um, so I'm, I'm now putting on the, uh, I understand all the nonsense you have to put up with. I appreciate like it was, I, I tried to go to the, to the, the business class lounge for United airlines, which I are, you know, I feel, guilty about anyways mm-hmm. for going to a different class lounge but i do have the uh, enough air canada points where i'm in like their upper tier 
of travelers. And they have like an, an agreement with United Airlines. So I went and they wouldn't believe that I was a member. So I had to like keep digging up things on the internet on my phone to prove. And like that, that is, they found the thing that makes me most uncomfortable, which is proving my uh, um, uh, qualifications for some kind of elite treatment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is the most uncomfortable thing I could do. It's like back in the old, in the Bare Naked Ladies days, um, if you leave the venue, like without your, your backstage pass laminate around your neck, uh, and then you come back in, usually what would happen is I'd walk in with my bandmates mm -hmm. and the security would let them all through. And then they would stop me and they go, Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Here? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in the band. They said, well, where's your pass? And I'd say, well, it's in the dressing room. Uh, I forgot in the dressing room. And they're like, well, sorry, you can't come in. And I'm like, Oh, I want to say, you know, there's, I, there can't be a show tonight. If you yeah. don't like <laughs> but then that sounds full of myself. So then like, you just kind of do every, I, I would do everything possible to not really like everything I did end up making my, make me look less worthy of being backstage. Mm -hmm. uh, but I should have just like, you know, put my foot down, but that, that always felt mm. too uncomfortable for me. Yeah, and this is where YouTube would have come in handy back then. You could have just brought up the video for one week. Yes. And just said, look, me, that's me, that's me there, look. Good point. But see, now I could do that. What if I did that now? If I went and pulled up the video for one week and I was backstage at a Bernie Gillies concert, a band I've not been part of for 13 years, and the security guard like, oh, well, there's the guy, and they let me back. And then all of a sudden, the guys come back into the dressing room, and I'm eating their taco chips yeah. <laughs> hey guys that wouldn't be comfortable it wouldn't be cool so maybe that's not enough that would be awkward i think yeah yeah it would be <laughs> but funny yes definitely funny so i presume you got a flight in the end i did yes so i got i didn't i was worried i didn't want to have to stay overnight because having to like wait around an airport all day and then finding out you don't get on a plane that night so you have to get a room, but you just wasted eight hours in an airport mm. is depressing. But that didn't happen. I got I was home on the ground by midnight. So nice. that was Sunday night. So Monday was recovery from that. Mm -hmm. And then also between this most recent album that I was that I just finished, uh, I also have another record that I can't tell you too many details about. Oh, but it's with some other people. So I, I owed them some tracks. So I had to get to the studio to do some recording ah. that was kind of that that was monday too that sounds exciting yeah it's it? not it's not it's not like uh uh it's not um uh i'm trying to think of something it's not like it's not like it's you know harry styles it's not oh. like somebody who's very you know oh. it's it's people who are who've are of a similar vintage to me oh there you go okay yeah similar stature as well okay um so who the hell is that then uh, we're going to play a game of Guess Who, Stephen. Um, so it's a Trans Canada Highwayman. There you go. Hey. <laughs> nice. So, you've recovered. I did. Yeah, so yes, didn't take that one. No, that's good. So, Tuesday, I guess we'll move on to then. Uh, Monday's Well, gone. Tuesday uh, was a visit to the dentist. Oh. I had, the dentist. It, it, I had, I, you know, I've never had great experience with the dentist, but it wasn't like, you know, the cartoon sense of like it's the worst thing to do and i hate it and i hate the dentist when i moved here to new york state uh my wife christine found a very good dentist very close to the house and he was just the nicest guy i was like that was a pleasure every time pleasure it didn't take too long he's pleasant it was great and they were nice to get on the phone and then he retired during the pandemic oh no so he said well this is you know here's my dentist that i go to um why don't you give him a call so we gave him a call but he's like it's like 45 minute drive 40 minute mm. drive from the house which is a pain yeah and i don't enjoy going there i mean i'm sure he's a wonderful man at home i just don't feel the same sense of ease but the good he had a second guy there on on staff today like another another dentist he wasn't my the main guy wasn't there the new dentist he's like he's one of those hey what do we got here kind of guys like really really uh sounds like a morning show dj on american radio Okay. Yeah. Um, but he was wearing a tie. He was a younger guy, and they were very impressed. They said I had almost no tartar on my teeth. Oh. Yeah. It was very, the best, maybe the best I've ever, ever ever gotten. They said I don't know whatever you've done, but you got to keep doing it. Oh. So this dentist was it just a tie he was wearing? Or... Oh no, he was wearing he was wearing like a I couldn't see the whole outfit because he had the white 
jacket over top, white kind of lab oh, coat okay. over top. So he could have been naked under that coat. Yes, yeah. it's very possible he was just wearing. Well, there was a shirt. At least it could have been like a, a dicky, you know, which well, is just the shirt collar and yeah, front. Yeah, yeah. Or it could have been a short sleeve. But it was. I think it was probably he was wearing a. You know, I didn't look down below. I thought that would be rude. Yeah, but, and it's difficult as well when you lay down at the dentist. To pull you the, don't really the, the, see, the gown yeah. down and just have a look. I mean, <laughs> what he's yeah, wearing. They yeah, the, <laughs> they generally frown on that, don't they? I've got visions now of him leaning over, just in the middle of checking, and the tie just falling out into the <laughs> open oh, mouth. Yeah. No, yeah, I think that's why the way the tie clip. But I mean, he was. What I mean is, that he didn't look. He, he looked. He looked presentable, but uh, he just he oh. spoke in a way that made me feel like I couldn't be friends with him outside of the office. Hmm. Do they do that thing in America that they do in this country at dentists when they they reel off a load of numbers when they're looking inside your mouth? They're you know, like your upper that, six. Maybe that's yeah. They they say uh, uh, upper buckle when they say stuff like that. There are yeah, uh, that you know uh, uh, yeah whatever they have their, they have their like a little bit of lingo as to I think to meaning the cheek side or the tongue side. Yeah, and then which number? Yes, they do. They do that. Like one will say it to the other. And it's like, yeah. like check, check. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I know when they do a little oh <laughs> I, I get that sometimes. No, my, my favorite is oh sorry. Oh yes. yes I one yes. time went to the dentist and um the guy uh he said, Oh, you just have a small cavity. I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna drill and fill here. You don't need any uh, any freezing for it because it's just it's very small, it's just on the outside of the tooth. And then mm -hmm. he was like drilling, and he goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And as he did that, it was like it was like I had just stuck my whole hand into a light socket. Oh, like, I just thought I was just gonna grind. It was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I think I bit his finger last time. He was he decided to fill something without asking me if that was okay because I got billed for it like immediately after. I didn't check if I had enough money in my account. Um, that like, was some resin thing, and because they. They, I don't know when they do stuff. They're like, bite on this. Like, do you mean your finger? Right. I've, no, I've done that. Especially if you are frozen. I've 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 bitten hard on a dentist finger when I when I had freezing in there and had no idea what was going on. Nice, nice. That's revenge, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just real solid fingers from yeah. like how you get calluses on the guitar hand. Like right. they have calluses from bites. That's right, and that's why they have, they wear those gloves. Yeah. Because it keeps the blood inside. Yeah, yeah. Also, they look really unsightly. That's another reason to wear them. <laughs> so were there any cavities or any fillings that needed to be done on this? Nothing. It was perfect. It was the best checkup oh, I've ever had. Yeah. And they were like, they almost, if they could have carried me through the hallways on their shoulders, they would have. <laughs> that would help. Everyone in the waiting room applauded you. They all yelled, gorgeous teeth. Yeah, it really it felt like it felt like a celebration, and then of course, like I'm texting Christine, she's like, "That's great," but I thought like I was still high on the uh, excitement that was oh, in the office okay. there about how great my teeth were. Yeah, are you sure it was excitement, not morphine or anything like that? <laughs> there was nothing. There was nothing was put. I mean, they may have been enjoying some morphine before I showed yeah. up. Uh, but not, not. He's got the best teeth in the world. I can't see any tart in his teeth yeah. at all. No, it's it's, it's whatever you're doing, it's fan it was the best review I've ever gotten. Like it was better than any music review I've ever gotten. You should put it on your yeah. website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? You're right. A little quotes. Um, almost no tartar. <laughs> whatever you're doing, it's amazing. Keep it up. And then Steven's dentist. <laughs> Four stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. That's good, that's good. That's a review that I will never get. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. I hate dentists so much. You know, I can't stand them. I haven't been in years. That's a horrible thing to but, say. Yeah, you probably shouldn't say that. Part. No, I probably shouldn't say that, but... Um, no, I, yeah. I, I did the same thing. I avoided for several years, then I went back. And then, you know, multiple things. Like, um, I had I was afraid of going because they kept saying I was going to have to go to a periodontist and have mm. like grafts on my put on like skin grafts put on my gums. It's so gross. Oh, and it sounds painful and awful. And they I've never in there. Wow. And then I've had like well, and also I stopped smoking, so I like there was no like none of that stuff to scrape off. It was wonderful. Mm. 
Well, that's, that's good. Now I love the dentist. I'm just going to hang out there. No, I need to find one closer to the house. That's it. Unless they say, oh, oh, you know, been brushing enough, and they go, no, I'm going back to the other guy. That's right. That's good enough for him. Yeah. yeah. Even if he's retired, just turn up, turn up at his door. I know. We want to. We want to, like, come on, buddy. Just one. Just us. Yeah, you've missed it. Come on, you've missed it. Yeah. Surely. Come on. Yeah, what are you doing with your time now? Yeah. Look in here. You think we've discussed dentists enough? Probably, right. yes. Let's move on. Shall we talk about Wednesday? Let's go to Wednesday. Here's the thing. So I, I have, I'm looking at my calendar, and I see 10 a.m. phoners, which is, you know, I had obviously had phone, telephone interviews. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to make you feel weird. I, I don't remember them. Oh, that's fine. You know, I don't even remember what they were. No, that's fine. Who was I? Oh, I do now. I do. It was for a, f a festival I played in Canada. It was uh, a bunch of, like, it was like the CBC. It was a local country music station who was presenting the festival. Oh, okay. uh, it was it was very nice. Everybody was very pleasant. Good. You know, it was a t maybe a talk radio station as well. That's what it was all to advance that one. Yeah. That, which we will get to because it's on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. New album time because you've got lots of lots of chats and interviews and things like that. Exactly. So a lot of this kind of thing and a lot of uh, and that's the thing is now is that everybody ex insists on seeing you yes when the in the in the times of Zoom mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I used to be able to kind of walk around the house anxiously when I was doing interviews because I would be on the phone and I'd just be wandering walking in a circle touching things cleaning things wipe like, always like sweeping something or wiping something mm -hmm. while I'm doing the interview that's always like because they make me so anxious that I have to just walk around. And now, no, I mean, this is not a criticism of I your. I mean, it sounds like it is, problem. but <laughs> it, is, uh, it, it is yours and everybody else's. Okay. But like, so I'm doing one, like for example, like to our, it's whatever mm, radio station news program, mm -hmm. um, where normally I would just be on the telephone, and now they have to see me, so I can't. I mean, if it makes around. you feel any better, Stephen, have a walk around your studio. It's fine. It'd be hard. I wouldn't. I don't. I need one of those, like, uh, you know, uh, head, like a oh, like a head mic, yeah, and a microphone. Britney Spears type thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that equipment you got there. <laughs> That's what you're lacking. Yeah. Oh well, I hope we're not making you too uncomfortable. No, not at all. Not at all. I'm telling you, in, in general, yeah. it's, it's, I'm gonna have to try really harder, I guess. But you're gonna have to get closer. Yeah. If, if if I get closer to the microphone, maybe that might. There we help. go. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> you know it. I get it, you know, I, I always, and I always feel awkward asking for a guest to be on. There's always part of me that feels like I don't want to bother you, you know. Um, it's, you know, but there's give and take, isn't there? You do have to promote as well as... It's a symbiotic. It is, yeah, yes. it is. Everybody needs, you need to do it, they need somebody yeah. on to do yeah. it. Um, and part of it, like when you when you start doing like a, an album cycle uh interviews is like a lot of it is somebody has a bio that they've been given a press yeah. release and that's what they've digested and that's what they may have in front of the of you so they're basically asking you questions that you already wrote the answers to yeah and so part of you has to regurgitate them part of you has to recur regurgitate them in a way that is both clear and also not totally phony mm -hmm. and boring yeah so sometimes actually the visual connection makes it easier to to connect with people, but uh, but it's harder to multitask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope our podcast is a little breath of fresh air for you. Like barely sure spoken is. about your yeah. music yeah. at all. Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> talk about the music. No. 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 I like it. I've I've heard bits, um, bits and pieces here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to try to, try to make a go of it. See if I can make this thing yeah, work. Yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> You've been doing the live from home shows as well, haven't yes. you? Um, that uh, I mean, a lot of musicians have embraced performing from home to people watching them over Zoom and stuff. Um, how have you found it? Uh, you know, at first I was uh, hesitant because, like, when 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 lockdowns first started in 2020, I watched everybody doing kind of free on facebook and instagram whatever else things me and my guitar from my kitchen yeah and i thought well first of all i thought like it's, maybe it's a little more casual than i would like it to be and second of all i thought um 
God damn it, the, the one thing left where we could make a living in music is now free as well. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was worried that that was going to like normalize, that everybody expected all concerts to be free from now on because of this. Yeah. It didn't work that way. So when I found a way to, to, to you know, to, to charge for tickets, I thought, well, I'll try that and see if it worked. And it did. People came. I was, had no idea whether they were going to or not. But at that point, then you feel like, as much as we're all stuck at home, everybody's in the same boat, I'd like to present something that's more of a show yeah. than kind of the, hey, here's three songs from my kitchen thing, especially if people are paying for it and want them to get their money's worth. So I was very focused on trying to make the shows different from each other, trying to make them, you know, as high quality when it came to visuals and audio and stuff and make them unique unto themselves. And I think that worked for the most part, but it's funny, the last one I did... I uh, I did I totally winged it and didn't have prepare anything and it was one of the most fun shows of all of them. So maybe I've been doing them wrong for over two years. Maybe, maybe. You've caught a few, haven't you, Emmy? Yeah. You know, you've, yeah, you've been on songs. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I've tuned in. But uh, and, uh, one thing actually that I've noticed, you haven't actually put the price up or anything. You haven't cashed in and thought. People will pay more. Don't like, give you the, ideas. No, the, the shows are cheap anyway. <laughs> like you do get more than your value for money, especially as well. The, for the purposes of the listener, I'm a very, a very big fan of Stephen Page, and I've been tuning in to pretty much all of the Life from Home shows. Um, and they started like just over an hour or something, and now like a, a show can be two hours sometimes or something like that. And yeah, some have been over two and a half, which might be too long, but I still enjoy. It. <laughs> and um. So in English monies, that's a fiver for right. a, a lot of music and a lot of music that you probably won't even hear, like, say, those who are going on your, your, to see you live on your UK tour um, might not get the same songs as that you cover in the Life from Home shows. You get deep cuts, as you like to say. Mm. That's right. Yeah, I, I've done, you know, everything I've ever written or put out there, plus all these covers have been, you know, probably pretty close to about 300 songs that I've done over the course of this thing, which is, you know, and, and, and a lot of them are ones that I wouldn't bother pulling out for a in-person concert. But yeah. it's been fun to be able to try all these different ones. Uh, speaking of which, in-person concerts in the UK, are we going to hear anything from your new album on that tour? Indeed. Oh, I have, really? uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll at least a couple things, but uh, yes, that's the plan. So I'm going to rehearse with... Kevin and Craig, my trio mates, uh, next week for a couple of days to try and work some some new songs and some other old catalog songs that haven't been in the shows. Because that's the other thing about doing these live from home shows is that sometimes there have been songs that I hadn't played live before or hadn't played without BNL or whatever else. And so now I've gone, oh, that, that this song here and that song there could be good additions to the set so we're going to try and learn learn a few new things at least nice. something to look forward to then fantastic mm-hmm. um so wednesday was the that was the phoners yeah that was the talking to all the people yes <clears throat> and how many did you do on wednesday i think it was four okay yeah, but they were relatively short. That's the thing. As opposed, you know, if you do a podcast, that tends to be anywhere from thirty minutes to an hour. Yeah, and then sometimes they say, Can we do, "Would you mind sticking around for another ten minutes?" Yeah, and they do. Sometimes I say that's fine, and sometimes I say, "No, I've got another call." Mm, yes, um, depends on how closely together they they're booked. But uh, a telephone one, like for radio, can often be like it's ten minutes. Yeah, max. You try and pack as much personality into ten minutes as possible. I, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? You know, you, but you do have to do it. It is part of the promoting thing. I get it. I get it. Um, but it it must feel like you're just repeating yourself over and over again. It's, that can be that can be stressful too, because I feel like, and I think maybe for some people, it's quite easy to just repeat yourself over and over again. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you were a politician, you felt you had to give a different answer every time. That would yeah. not be good, probably. Of course not. No. But I also feel like I feel like people in the audience who hear more than one interview hear you say the same answers to questions, and it yeah. feels like I I worry that an audience member is going to go, "Oh, he's he's a fake. He's a big fake because he's got his pat answer." Mm. Although it's probably not the case. That's just me overthinking it. 
Yeah, well, if you're getting asked the same questions, how many different answers are you going to have? Well, maybe you're supposed to come up with something funny every time. Oh, There's... no, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You don't have to be funny. That's overrated, being oh, funny. sure is. Yeah. Mm. But I imagine it must feel like you're just repeating yourself over and over again. Yes. I just feel mm. like I'm just... The problem is that when you do that, you... I, I feel like, you know, if I... Do, don't say the same thing over and over again. People think you're a phony. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to do it a third time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we are rocketing through Ooh. this. What are we on now? Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Wow. Thursday was a day when I was doing business things. Oh, Different business things like trying to get proper distribution for my album. So it meant Zoom calls and things like that, as well as I was still doing recording, not for my album. My album was long finished by then. Okay. But uh, with the Trans Canada Highwayman, trying to get some stuff finished for that. And Craig is mixing that album, my friend Craig Northey, who is in the band. So he's a taskmaster. You, get, you send stuff off, and then you get the other guys in the band saying, mm, can you play this part differently? Or can you add this thing or whatever else? So the day becomes some of that. And then also I've been trying to kind of like now tidy up my studio. Now that the album is finished, uh, my album is finished with its recording, I have no excuse to have such a mess here. So mm. I'm station by station around the studio trying to clean things up. Yeah. I mean, it looks like you've got a lot to clean up. Um, I haven't seen this side of the studio before. Yes, this is from the from the computer. This is down the long way. So Yeah. It's quite um, it's quite an extensive room. Like, yeah. all the way down there. Yes, yeah. it's quite long. So down there is kind of like that's like the living room with the stereo. It's like and the books and stuff. It's kind of the lounge area. And then right around me is kind of this is where you can't see the ang the angle of all the equipment, all the recording equipment that I'm is all built into this desk that I'm sitting at. Hmm. I have too much stuff. I don't use it all. I should probably sell some. But I don't want to because I have a sentimental feeling about it, and then also it looks really cool. It does, yeah. Selling stuff's overrated as well. True. Um, we're not. We're not fans. We of just had to put all our stuff in storage, and then discover that we have a fuckload of stuff. Yeah. It's amazing how but you accumulate have... stuff, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, you know, moving everything out of the house, we're like, oh, this will take a day. Yeah. There were so many boxes labeled ornaments. And I don't know which ornament is in which, but just just ornaments. And it's all weird ornaments because we're nerds, so it's all like f uh, film replicas and, mm -hmm. and props and things like that. But I don't want to get rid of it. No, it's chaos. It's absolute chaos. So uh, selling stuff, it's overrated as well. Don't oh, sell I, I agree. I think, and I think then having to deal, like I, as much as I, maybe if I liked other people, it would be okay, but I, I have it. Like, imagine, I don't know what they do over there for, for if you're selling something, where do you sell things? Oh, well, eBay. Uh, uh, not, yeah, not but is there like stores, an in person yeah. selling type thing, like Craigslist? Uh, yeah, we have, there's Gumtree, I think is our equivalent, right. but Gumtree's kind of dodgy. Yeah, some people use, I bought stuff off Facebook Marketplace. Right, that's yeah. popular here too. So that, that's the kind of thing that would require people coming here. And I don't want that. And people talking to me. And then, like we did a we did a garage sale once at our house because we had a bunch of crap. And I had a few things like a speaker cabinet for a guitar amp. And and like there's got to be somebody there who has to come and tell you that your thing is worthless and it's only worth oh, this or whatever. And yeah, yeah. I mean that's that that's their their technique for getting the best price. Is, and it's like ah, oh, someone just came to my house, made me feel bad. Yeah. And it's that a piece of my equipment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't need it. No, no, you don't. There's always one yeah. expert, isn't there? Yeah. And then also, you know, if I was to sell it on eBay, and no matter how you package it up and perfectly, and somebody's going to complain about something, or mm -hmm. and then you know they ruin your seller rating or what? Who knows what? Yeah, yeah. I've got an exceptional seller rating on eBay. I, I I do yeah, uh, and it's uh, it's mainly because I don't sell anything. Right. I just buy stuff. I'm on one hundred percent. So you know I he, he always pays on time. That's like because it's instant. You just press a button. Right. You know, exactly. And it's done. Yeah. 
Um, it annoys me, actually, but talking about packaging. It annoys mm-hmm. me when it's too well packaged and you can't actually yeah, get I just into want what the you thing. want to get into. Yeah, exactly. You want it now. Yeah. What is that about, huh? No. Huh? What's up with that? Yeah. What's up with packaging? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's terrible, man. So we're working on our tight five, right? For yeah. our stand yeah. We're, we're, so that would be a thing to do, though. Two guys doing the same stand up routine in different rooms, mm-hmm. but every night you do the same routine and yeah. assume and pretend that you don't know the other guy's doing exactly the same routine. Yeah. And then people, somebody else who's part of the team but doesn't appear to be, then films both acts and puts them side by side, split screen on YouTube, and can <laughs> yes. create some excitement. Over the oh, fact yeah. that these people are who's stealing from whom? Exactly, who's stealing from who? That actually reminds me of something that happened um, when I was in college uh, doing A levels, and we were doing uh, performing arts, so we had to put on a drama piece that we'd all written, and we hadn't written anything in our class. And it's one day someone picks up a script and just hands it around, like someone wrote this. No one knows who. Turns out it was the other performing arts class. So we've been learning their script. Oh. And one of them had walked in on us all rehearsing and been like, what the fuck are you doing? You just stole our <laughs> thing. Like, we didn't mean to. We didn't know who wrote it. We, um, yeah. So that would have been pretty embarrassing. Had it got to the exam in front of the examiners and we just put on the exact same <laughs> script but just performed slightly differently yeah. with us confused as to where all these ideas had come from. Yeah. Um, I think we only had one piece at that point that was genuinely just ours and so we about two weeks before the performance we had to come up with an entirely new one so wow yeah i didn't like college (laughs) (laughs) that wasn't fun wow oh we should yes i can't believe someone picked it up and didn't check and they just they photocopied it and handed it around and we're like oh thank you for my part i don't have to do anything now just learn it unbelievable wow so Thursday was the uh, yeah, remind Thursday, me. Thursday was, Thursday was business, business stuff and cleaning up. Uh, that's why I forgot because it's business, business I'm time. Business I don't deal with day. business. Makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. Having business calls and how tough do you have to be in a business call? Oh, are you tough in a business call? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No. I'm a total pushover. You get battered down easily. Yeah, and then I get somebody else, a manager or a lawyer, to be the tough person. Oh, Christine. Christine's a tough person. She is a tough person, yes. But she's she has said to me with this stuff, when it comes to, like, my distribution agreements, she said, I don't really care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she cares about the end result, but she just, like, you know, yeah. she doesn't have the experience in the record business to be able to know what's appropriate and what's not. Uh, and as far as she's concerned, anybody who takes any percentage of what I do, and she's absolutely right, who takes any percentage is somehow, you know, getting something for nothing. Yeah, she's, she's basically right, but I just, you know, still how the how the world works. You shared something on Instagram the other day, actually, which I didn't realize that some venues, when you're selling merchandise, take a cut of the merchandise. Oh yeah, just for what I that just yeah. That's yeah. That's and that's the way of the world, and it is like I can understand. They're giving you a space in their venue to sell your stuff. It'd be like selling, you know, have you go to a whatever, some kind of, you know, you have a, a stall at the Christmas market and they charge you for your stall. It's like that. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But the, the amounts that they charge, are it's usually for what they call soft goods, so T-shirts and stuff. Quite often it's as much as 25% they Whoa, take. Geez. And... um uh, for um, hard goods, so CDs and vinyl records, between 10 and 15 percent. Mm. Uh, and then, if you don't have your own person to sell to vend the stuff, then you have to hire somebody else. Usually, the venue will provide, and you pay them another hundred dollars or something like that. So it's not so even it can because be, they're providing yeah. the stuff; it's just because you're there selling it. Yeah, their building. exactly. I yeah. do like I do like the point of like well. You should get a cut of the alcohol sales then. That exactly. I mean, I tried that er- very early on in my career. Mm, yeah. Because it was like it was always like, well, and we, you know, even we would do this with with even with with uh, with big shows with bare naked ladies quite often. Like I try because 
the venue will get they'll get a cut of parking they'll get a cut of all the alcohol sales and they or they get all that stuff and then so my position was well if you want to share that with us we'll share this with you mm -hmm. it didn't really go very far it's mm. just kind of the, it's the way the business works stacked against us ah, just sell your own alcohol there Stephen. yes exactly yeah. well and there are some acts who would do that some acts mm -hmm. who would be in charge not so much of the alcohol but the but anything else any drugs were often um maybe run by the artist yeah. not our band yes. no of course not no no are drugs popular in music i haven't really heard music. i think stuff like there's things that people take for things like uh, arthritis oh yeah rolling stones uh, and that. yeah, yeah there's yeah. Uh, a lot of supplements like vitamins and things that, that were really yeah. popular with musicians and their fans. yeah we handed out tequila and like I, when i uh, performed in a bar and um, i bought a bottle of tequila because it was um a dia de los muertos gig and then um, mm -hmm. so we thought tequila's for everyone so i made everyone hold it while we performed tequila um nice. both ver television version and the um original one that Wee herman dances to but mm -hmm. kind of does it um and alex had to go around issuing the tequila shots i didn't even clear this with the bar so i don't know how no, happy they no, were about it no, no. but and you brought your own bottle to a bar yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then right. everyone had to hold it tequila. So in newcastle once we brought our own coals there <laughs> <laughs> Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do? It's me, Dr. Stephen Page. As well as this lovely podcast, from today you can also hear the first single from my new album, Excelsior, the one that I just talked about just now. It's called Zoom, and it's available on all your streaming music platforms, so please do give it a listen and a like and a share, because Lord knows us musicians make piss all from these streaming sites, so a few plays and likes is the least you can do, you cheap bastards. Love you. Bye. Um, so yeah, businesses overrated as well, Stephen. That's true. Absolutely. Dentists imagine, are imagine if there was. Imagine no business. That's uh, John Lennon left that line out. Yeah. yeah. Was, originally, it was imagine no business. And that was like he what a dream. Religion though, and yeah, works. Yeah. It's the same thing though. Business and religion. If you, you want to get think into about it. it, yeah. If you want to really think about it, we're not going to do that now though. It's Friday, what was Friday like? Friday, I had to drive quite a long ways to get to. I played in, on Saturday, which we'll get to. Yeah. But I played on Saturday. I played in Kingsville, Ontario, which was a seven-hour drive. Mm -hmm. to my house. So I did some work at the studio until I could just no longer. I mean, being a man getting older. Here's what I used to try and do. I used to forever. Uh, try to get to whatever I needed to be at right when I needed to be there. Uh -huh. So, for instance, if I needed to be there at 1 in the afternoon on Saturday and it was a seven-hour drive, I would leave at 5 in the morning, which gave me an hour buffer, yeah, uh, and drive on Saturday morning. like, And that was what I would do. And then as soon as I was done the gig, I'd get in the car and drive home mm -hmm. for seven hours. Like that was, And I was exhausted all the time, but it didn't matter. I was younger was also stupider um now and it'd be like i would get to the airport right in time to get through security and whatever else and i would be sweaty people would be worrying if i was going to get to the gig on time or wherever i was going to go i'd be panicked i'd be stressed now i will get to an airport three hours in advance just and i don't care i'll just sit there i'll sit there and i'll listen to something or i'll read something or i'll stare into space and time just passes, and then you're on your plane. And it's fine. So I decided because I was playing Saturday afternoon at this festival, I would leave Friday afternoon and get there. And I did. I got there. I gave myself time to stop along the way, stop for an ice cream at a Dairy Queen. I knew where a Dairy Queen was along the highway. I was like, this is going to be my treat for finishing my album. It's going to be my, re my reward. <laughs> posted it on the Instagram. People want to go back for proof. I'll uh, have a look. And uh, I decided I would stop at this Dairy Queen, which is in a roadside, as you would call services. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, it was closed. What? The other things in it, Tim Hortons, Wendy's, whatever else, they were all still open, but the Dairy Queen portion was closed for renovations, which I thought was oh. a stupid thing to do in the summer. Terrible, terrible. Or Dairy Queen in the winter for renovations. However, it was closed. So then I was mad for a minute, and then I thought, stop being mad, find another one. You got time. You gave yourself the night before. Hmm. So I uh, went on to the Google Maps app that I have on my phone. I found another Dairy Queen in a, in a smaller town. Stopped there. It was wonderful. So that was, you know, then I drove for another three hours after that with severe stomach cramps. Uh-huh, uh-huh, of just course. gut-wrenching, lactose intolerance cramp, just, oh, screaming almost, yeah. uh, but still feeling jubilant. And then got to the hotel about 11.30 at night, so I was able to watch about 15 minutes of television and then fall asleep and wake up to the television screaming loud in the morning mm. it was great it was just like old times the stomach cramps are worth it aren't totally. they totally absolutely yeah what flavor did you go for oh it was a a peanut buster parfait which is a, so dairy queen that's a that's um white you know vanilla soft ice cream mm-hmm. with uh what they call mexican peanuts which are the red skin peanuts oh yes um, delicious mm-hmm. and uh, hot fudge sauce. Nice. Yeah, really great. Yeah. Too far, too much, and just fantastic. Yeah. You know your food, don't you? Because you had a program. I did. Um, yeah. Illegal Eater, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which you can watch on uh, Amazon Prime, by the way, in the UK. You can watch it there. Nice. You got to pay for it, but you can watch it. Um. So. I mean, would you do another series of that? Would you be up for that? Sure. Do a UK one. Do a UK uh, one. See, I, we've actually tried. The producers and I tried for this. What happened with that show was we we did it, and it's funny because it's just on the cusp. It was while Anthony Bourdain was doing his show. There are a few shows like that out there, but that template has now like blown up on Netflix. There's 15 different shows like that yeah, now. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was. Uh, Broadcast by a Canadian uh, TV network that it n- was at the time called like Travel and Escape. So it was all about travel shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but by the time the series wrapped up, they had ch- pivoted and switched all their programming to be about paranormal things. Oh, okay. It was like about haunted houses and yeah and stuff. And so our show didn't fit. So they didn't they didn't renew it. In the United States, it was on a, a network that doesn't exist anymore called the Esquire Network. And I knew then that it was not going to take off because I would, like, tweet stuff at them. And they wouldn't even retweet no. my tweets about the show. Like, I knew that they they, they did nothing to promote yeah. it. Then yeah. They don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. So, haha, I still do. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh So we tried a few years ago to do another season, and we just couldn't get the funding to do it. So... I don't know if the uh, if the desire is there from any broadcasters, but I know the producers and I would be happy to do another. And I think, you know, we had talked about that was the plan was if we were going to do a second season, it would be all outside of North America. I think they wanted to, do, to go to places like uh, Cuba and, other, and places in Central America and, and then potentially over to Europe and, and also the UK now that it's not Europe. It's still you. Technically, Europe, like no, actually, they got rid of that too. No, no it, it, it is no no longer geographically part of Europe. If you look some at of us are clinging on, some of us are clinging on to it, but yeah, I think yeah. mainland. I don't know. What, I don't know what continent it's part of anymore, but it's yeah. not allowed to be considered geographically Europe. I mean, if we're a floating island of disaster, we are. We're terrible. We're, we're the worst. We're the worst. Seems like you guys have some good choices politically, though, ahead of you. Oh, every, hey. every every option just looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's a wonderful time to exist right yeah, now. It is. <laughs> it's. Um, I heard someone say the other day the choice we got between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. It's like a um, choosing choosing between a root canal and a colonoscopy. I think that's what they said. Yeah. Which one's right. a colonoscopy? I don't know. Truss probably. Truss is probably colon. <laughs> right. I don't know. 
It doesn't matter, does it? It's, all, it's interchangeable. She doesn't seem like a very nice lady. No, no. Oh, oh anyway. But I do have a question, though. Um, as you were talking about the illegal eater, and early on you are talking about people coming to your house, where, did you find it kind of awkward being in other people's houses with them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is not, it's, not my, like, it's not my comfort zone, but I think that's part of what made the show more fun was, A, I knew that that I have some significant social anxiety with that stuff, and I think the the producers of the show knew that and thought it was funny yes, because they had no shame. So I would let them be the shameless guys to make stuff happen. Yeah, and then I would just go in knowing that like that they were there to protect me. So I kind of went I went on as a performer. I'd walk in. Yeah. Um, it would be things that I would be normally as a consumer. Like if I was to find out about one of these restaurants, I'd be too nervous to do it. Mm. I, you know, I found about out about it, some restaurant, whatever, a Korean restaurant in some lady's basement here in, in Syracuse, which there used to be one that was apparently very good. Never went. That just seems like that's just too much. That's too much work for me. Yeah. And that's terrifying. I can relate to that. I had trouble going to that neighbor's barbecue the other day. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just went because I thought, well, at least I'm being fed. Yeah. And, my uncle did it social anxiety is crippling you know that um n nothing bad is going to happen right you know you don't need to feel that way exactly. that it's not protecting you in any yeah. way but you cannot get out of your own head and your own shell it's awful i went to um the worst i've ever had it i went to a wedding uh an ex-girlfriend of mine she was getting married and we're on good terms gotten really well it's in scotland first time in scotland and um we were at the reception i made a joke at the table i was at i didn't know anyone at the table it didn't go down well <laughs> so i'd spent the entire night and the next morning in my hotel room i just couldn't leave you know i just the person i came with came upstairs and went just come down i was like i cannot leave this room and I can't explain why I can't leave this room, but I cannot leave it. Shame. That was called shame. Yes. Yes. I understand it. I know it well. Shame makes me socially... Socially... <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see. Yeah. Um, shame. Um, yeah, it's awful. It's awful. Well, that, and there you go. There, you know, I, I was thinking about that, like a, a, even just a British hotel, which is like, it's almost, it's it's like a step away from... Being a bed and breakfast, yeah. which is like for me, that is actual. Oh hell. yeah, a bed and breakfast is hell to me. That is like that is like walking into a stranger's house. Yeah, and Go, having going to from be... your room to the table, asking for breakfast. Yes, that's right. hell. Exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, actually, I'm fine. I don't need anything. Mm. Thank you. I'm just sitting here. I'll just stay no, in the room. You know what? I'm 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 okay. Actually, fine. Yeah, that's good. I'll, I'll grab something oh. later. Such a strange breed, aren't we? Really are. <laughs> um, so, Friday, you've done the trip. You've yes. got to your destination. Yes. I did. And then, so then Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so I was in Kingsville, Ontario. So this is between, well, it's basically 30 minutes from the American border at Detroit, between Detroit and Windsor. Mm -hmm. Um so it's on the shores of Lake Erie, and it is where almost all the tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers come from in the northeast of North America. Oh, okay. Because it's just a sea. It is a, the largest collection of greenhouses I've ever seen, like these giant five-story, mile-long greenhouses. And that's where they all come from wow. in this area. Okay. Interesting area. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a, a, a festival that um, was a folk festival that is I think they're trying to turn into something bigger and more uh, more uh, with more variety in its programming and larger audiences and mm. so on in a small town and uh, very nice. But one of the things that they do at, at folk festivals, at least here in North America, is they'll have what they call workshops during the day. So they'll have main stage shows at night and workshops during the day. So it's you... It's like several artists together on a stage, on a smaller stage, in a smaller venue. So there might be, you know, here it was myself and two other artists, people that I've known or known of for 30 years but hadn't seen. And they, everybody, there might be a theme to the show. This was just 
um, songs and stories. It was kind of a cop out, so I just told mm -hmm. some stories and sang a couple songs. Um, but uh, that's the thing can also be it's oddly anxiety inducing because for me in general, most of the folk musicians who are on these things are much better uh, instrumentalists than I am. Like they're really you know fantastic finger style guitarists or whatever mm. the things they do and they're quite often very serious even their humorous songs are are are, are seriously presented mm. you know because they're well, you know i don't know there's just this, there's a sense of reverence that the audience has for them and that they have for the for the place and i tend to not be that and i you know, even in the early days of Bare Naked Ladies, that was we would show up at these things and we'd kind of be punks, like just laugh at everything and be irreverent. And a lot of people didn't like us for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, so I have that memory of that. And then I also have, I, uh, I carry with me, but uh, hey, you've been a professional musician for 35 years. You know how to do this. And everybody here in this audience knows you and what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't help but feel there's an element of, competition between all the artists on stage and no one acknowledges it and that's kind of it, it's kind of fun yeah like, and I, I won but um but that's like that it's a weird thing to go into the to that situation and you have that kind of sense of competition where you do a everybody does a song and passes it on to the next person and mm, that was great that was really good thanks yeah i bet you had the least tartar on your teeth as well out of everyone right that, uh, yeah i bet you nobody else had any yeah. Uh, uh, had sorry, not nobody had as little as I had. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think everybody, you know, although I didn't get a good look at the teeth, and I don't think anybody was a smoker, but I bet you there are some heavy coffee drinkers. Mm, definitely. And a lot of them probably not. I assume the they smoke something at a folk festival. Yes, that's probably true. Although some of them seem a little more pious than that to me, in a way. Oh. Like there's a there's a, with some of the folk people. It seems a little more tightly wound than, than you'd think. That is weird. Um, and then the evening did a big, a big show, but there was all, all kinds of stuff that happened at this festival. Like, we showed up uh, before our um, our our sound check, and uh, the sound man was like, "You won't believe what just happened here." Some guy, like some townie, came and and uh, like started yelling at the staff like a, and at the band who was sound checking and stuff and then eventually like attacked a staff member and tackled her to the ground and then the cops had to be called but the cops were like a half an hour away so the sound man is sitting on this guy on the ground for half an hour until the cops show up and then we showed up like right after the guy was carted off so everybody is completely traumatized and i'm like hey how's it going oh oh okay walked into something really kind of dark but there's they're not they're not feeling dark they're laughing because they don't know how to cope with this weird thing that just happened of course, of course. Yeah. yeah but i've heard about folk festivals and the violence that takes place there well they had never experienced it before and uh, this festival had been going on for quite some time so there was no security or anything else because they thought it's a folk festival we don't mm. need that uh but you can't control the townies. Uh, you know there'll be Hell's Angels there next year. That's right. Exactly. It felt well, and it felt a little Altamont at uh, during during our show on the main stage because a guy just dropped right in front of the stage oh. in our second last song, and the whole thing stopped. He just passed out. I don't know if he had too much drink or if it was anxiety or if it was a heart attack or whatever, but he dropped and like a rock, and he was a big wow. guy. And uh, there was no security. There were no medics or anything else around. So volunteers and audience members kind of had to rally. We stopped our show, and then they got eventually got him moved out until an ambulance came, and then we could finish our oh, wow. set. But it was like it was scary. Yeah, yeah it felt. Yeah, it felt cool. yeah, that doesn't really happen often, does it? You say that when I worked at Hampton Court, um, they they'd have festivals at Hampton Court like for a week or something like that, and so you could perform in like the, the courtyard, just like Henry VIII had. Rock bands yeah, yeah. in his yeah. courtyard. Yeah. Sure. Um, but only Herman's yes. Hermits. Yes. <laughs> um, and the year before I was there, a, a Valley man had a heart attack during one of the shows. I can't remember what artist it was. I wish I could remember. But yeah, unfortunately, the man actually died. Um, but I don't think they even stopped the show. I well, think they just worked around him. <laughs> no. The work yeah. around him. Yeah. We had it happen during a, a, a trio show a few years ago. Uh, actually, it was quite a, it was 
early. It might be actually one of the first trio shows, but somebody had a heart attack and died in the middle. But it was at the back. We didn't know it was happening. Mm. But it does, you know, it does happen. And so a big festival with thousands of people, you'd kind of hope that they'd be a little better prepared yeah. for it. I mean, I just hope they were enjoying the show, you know? Yeah, also that's true. I, I, hope, I hope they were like, oh, my God, it's Old Department, my favorite song. Yeah. So I could die happy now, that kind of thing. Right, yeah. Exactly. They just, As opposed it. to, I don't want to be here. What right. way out options have I got? Yeah, it's a little congested there. If I drop, somebody will get me out. <laughs> I don't want to go through the bar. Yeah. And, <laughs> right, I'm just giving up. It could happen. Yeah. Uh, so, you did that on Saturday. Yep. Is that like a very semi stressful time? It was actually really fun, though. I really enjoyed it. The show was great. But despite the. The violence and uh, <laughs> uh, we had a good, we had, it was just myself and Kevin Fox. We had a wonderful time. We enjoyed ourselves. The audience enjoyed it. And then Sunday, I got up and uh, drove uh, back to Toronto where my family, my parents live. And uh, it was my dad's 80th birthday. Oh, so had nice. A birthday nice. Yeah, it was very nice. nice. That's good. What sort of, um, what sort of thing did you get up to for your dad's birthday? It was uh, about um, 40 people of friends and family in the uh, um, the common room, the, the party room of my parents' apartment building, mm -hmm. condominium where they live. And uh, my brother ordered some food, some Italian food. We had some of that and mm -hmm. uh, uh, just kind of stood around, looked at slides, old slides, mm -hmm. um, sang happy birthday, ate some cake. And uh, that was about that. Mm. And then, oh, we had far too much food left over afterwards. I sent my kids home with some. Yeah. It was still too much and packed it up and cleaned up. And that was that. Okay. Did you get to have a go on the slides? I did. No, we were just showing them on the screen. Oh, I see. Sorry. I thought it was a collection of old slides. Oh, that would be wonderful, though, if we did. <laughs> uh, no, they, they, they don't have that. They have, they have some, um, it's like some tennis and stuff but I, it's not really a child friendly facility it's one of those no. places that's for older people mm -hmm. and they don't like the fact that these older people have grandchildren I so they don't build things for them to touch oh I got it I got it yeah. ah, that's a shame so you can only look at the slides yeah it... look at the slides well, that's the... It. Yeah. yeah there is a swing set that you can swing but you just can't slide Oh, well, that's something. Is that for the older people, though? It is only, yes, you have to show, it's a 55 and up. So even you can't go on that. That's right. You must have been gutted. But I, if I had brought my backstage pass, yes. they would let me do it. That is true. That is true. You can do anything when you got a backstage pass, can't you? That's right. Because backstage is where it's all at. Do you have your pass for to Dairy Queen? Did you get free Dairy Queen? I did not get it for free, and mm. nobody recognized me there. Um, which is, it's fine with me. I don't mind. I like to just live my life. And then occasionally when somebody recognizes me, I feel like something wonderful mm. is about to happen. Nothing does. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Where are the other guys? <laughs> so it sounds like a cracking week, to be honest. Um, oh, if you were to rate your week out of a score of whatever, what would you rate it? I would give it a seven, a solid seven. Solid seven. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I would say it's not it's not the not in like best weeks of my life, mm -hmm. but good. And uh, nothing really horrible happened. Well, that's what I like to hear, yeah. you know. So is there anything you would like this is where it gets nitty gritty. Is there anything you would like to promote, get off your chest or confess to? Mm. I would like to promote as you as you have already done, UK tour. Starting on uh, whatever that is, uh, 8th of September, I think. Mm. Um, going until the 18th. You can find more information at stephenpage.com. And a uh, new album, Excelsior, out on the 29th of September. I see. So very busy on you. Very busy oh, month. Yes, it is a very busy one. Okay, good September. I'm going to four of the shows. You're going to four of the shows? My goodness me. Well, it's been a long time since the last one. So you wanted to get full. <laughs> so I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm going to go to Glasgow for the first time. So I hope my flight isn't cancelled because that's a drive mm. I do not want to do. No. Not in my car. No, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a lot of fun. 
Well, I think I'm going to one of them, aren't I? I'm going to Brighton, so I will see nice. you there. Yeah. So that was your week. Uh, Emmy, is there anything you would like to add? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so, my thanks to Stephen Page, my thanks to Emmy Weber, I've been Alex Sebright, and that was, that was the week that was, was it? Goodbye. Why not go on tour singing your greatest hits and some new songs too? It may not work for everyone, but it's worth a shot. Music tours. Keeping musicians' teeth sparkling since 1672.